we're going to have to all work together on this and change our system because we are at the bottom of the list in terms of sales tax in America because of the amount of our sales tax and because of the way we collect it. We have to change that. And by the way, one of the underlying principles of our task force is to do away with that fifth penny as quickly as we can because it's just bad policy and we've got to find an alternative source of revenue. One other thing I didn't mention, this reminded me about that, we are facing another cliff in 2018. The money that the legislature raised during the se special sessions is going to go away. They made it temporary, and we've fallen back into the trap of temporary taxes, which we did for years while I was in the legislature and had to vote every couple of years to renew taxes. It's terrible policy. It makes for terrible politics of having a trade-off to get people to vote for taxes, well, you know, to give them a project or whatever. That happened. I hate to have to say it, but that's what happened. And you don't want to create a policy that has you voting on taxes to renew every two years. FEMA is a reimbursement process. You have to spend the money first and then get reimbursed. So that cash flow problem I talked about got exacerbated by the <coughs> flood because we've been spending money. Obviously, our position was we're going to spend whatever it takes in the height of the storm to save lives and property, and we did that, incurred a lot of obligations, which we will now receive a 90-10 match for. Usually the match is 75-25, Fed's paying 75. The president agreed early on to make that a 90-10 match, which was really good news for us. That, that's a big difference in what the state will have to pay. But as we saw in Katrina, there's going to be a post-disaster spike in sales taxes and in activity. And, and that will happen. It's probably already starting. I figure our, our tax receipts for um, September, October, November from a sales tax standpoint are probably going to be much bigger than was projected because of the spike from the flood and the fact that the fifth penny is going to start coming in as well. So I think it's going to be a problem in the short term. I think long term it's going to provide one of those spikes like you saw from Katrina in terms of revenue. But we've, we've got to remember we can't just say, okay, we're rich again. That's a one-time spike that we're going to see for a year or so. We can't plug that into our recurring expenses of government. We'll be back in the exact same position that the Edwards administration walked into. We've already cut, walking in the door, another 300 and some odd million from what was cut previously. And as we begin our budget planning for the next fiscal year, which begins July 1 of 17, our process will start next month. And it'll be the first time that we've really had a meaningful opportunity to, to put our fingerprints on the budget. We, we had the budget from last year, but we were literally preparing it on the fly right after we took office and when it had already been submitted in, in November. Um, and you will see some continued reductions in the budget that we're going to be proposing. One of the things that's talked about a lot are state, are state contracts. And we've, we've got a lot less than we had probably five or six years ago. There's been a steady decline of state contracts. It's going to go back up because of the flooding episode, but we're going to be scrutinizing very carefully those state contracts. It's not the be-all and end-all to solving the state's fiscal problems, but we can do a lot better job, I think, of saying to departments, you have to justify why you're contracting with a third party and not handling something in-house. The Revenue Estimating Conference will meet next week. We won't change that estimate price next week, but we'll meet again in October to, to make another examination of what we think the forecast will be. And at that point, I think you will see a change in the, in the price of oil. And as we've talked internally about it, it's probably going to go up some. It's not going to go up dramatically because we want to budget conservatively. We'd much rather underestimate the overall price of oil for the year and have a surplus than be overly ambitious and not reach it and have a deficit. The low-hanging fruit on any consolidation is UNO and SUNO. And it failed miserably when it was considered by the legislature. And it would probably fail again with this new legislature that's in place. And if you can't consolidate two universities that sit side by side and could share physical resources as well as personnel resources, I don't see that happening. And I don't think the governor at this point is interested in advocating that. And, and I know he is not going to be proposing a single board to oversee all of higher education, something we've talked about for a long time. There are a lot of mixed feelings on that. It's handled differently in different states, but um, my, my personal view is uh, spending an awful lot of political capital on that particular issue of whether or not you're going to consolidate to one board gets you away from a broader and bigger mission, which would be the better delivery of services in a more economical way by our existing, uh, existing campuses. It's a big topic of discussion in our task force. Um, 
The legislature properly is, is demanding accountability in terms of whatever exemptions and credits are granted. I think you're going to see an awful lot more scrutiny, uh, I know at our level, but particularly at the legislative level, to ensure that there's a quantifiable return on investment from exemptions and credits and deductions that the state gives to businesses um, to lure them here and to keep them here.